We're really out here making an iceberg, huh? Might as well be this one. Generation C, also known by other names such as Zoomer and post millennial Generation, is the generation that encapsulates those born around the late 90s and early 2000s. They're especially well known for being the first generation to truly be born in a digital culture and adapt to it natively. And as with every other generation, this generation has its own fair share of media and what was the craze back then. So now I'll be sharing with you that culture that some of us got to experience in its prime. This is the Gen C Nostalgia Iceberg. This first entry refers to the huge amount of cartoons and shows that were being aired on TV during the time. Things like Drake and Josh, the first seasons of Spongebob, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Invader Sim, iCarly, to name a few. All of these shows were a staple. And as it is usual with shows from other generations, these shows gave a sense of commodity which really stuck to in the sense that when we remember these shows, we remember moments of our lives, still pictures of our younger selves watching that show or cartoon. YouTube at the moment was pretty new to all of us back then. YouTube was the first mainstream platform to really give the user freedom to watch and also upload whatever they wanted. So it was no surprise that a lot of us went to it to browse for hours on end finding weird and funny videos that today could be considered nostalgic. Videos like Double Rainbow, Neon Cat, The Troll Lol Song, Peanut Butter Jelly Time are the thousands of remixes of This Is Sparta. All of these videos were what really made internet and YouTube culture special and what it is today. And if you ask me, they're the very own foundation of the memes that came after it. The Nintendo Wii first released on November 19th, 2006. It was one of the three main consoles of the 7th generation, and the only one to primarily include motion controls as a function. Being a console that was made by the Big N, and also the first big name console to have motion controls, it quickly propelled to become one of the best selling consoles in the world. And of course, given that this is a Nintendo console, the games were nothing but amazing and nostalgia worthy. If you ever owned a Wii console, you can definitely remember putting on the game disc in your console and seeing the channel animation pop up for that specific game. Or checking out the Wii channels. The overall vibe of the Wii is something that not a lot of consoles can replicate nowadays, and it is definitely well deserved. Legos back in the day were absolutely massive. They were being advertised on TV, there was Lego games, they had Lego shows being aired, and kids loved them. I mean, the very own premise of being able to build whatever you want is of course appealing for younger audiences, so Legos were extremely popular despite what I mentioned. They had Lego sets about everything, from Star Wars to Indiana Jones, and then later Lego started making franchises of their own, like Ninjago. All of this caused fans to quickly share their passion and later share their creations online and popularize things like stop motion movies and custom LEGO figures, which prompted some of us to join in on the craze. LEGOs remind us of a fun time when we used our imagination to make up stories and make fantastic creations. And they're still kicking today. Roblox is one of the most popular online game platforms in the world. Garnering over millions of players every single day, Roblox is without a doubt a big platform nowadays with its huge catalog of user-made games. But as with everything, Roblox had its beginnings and people remember these times fondly. Back when the UI and the games were still primitive and everything was more rudimentary. Or the fact that everyone had the OG face on their avatar or that they discovered the game because of some obscure YouTube video. Nowadays, most of the games that used to exist during the time are long gone or they no longer have active players. And as with every other online game, the website and the Roblox client has been gradually changing over the years, steadily changing the game from what it used to be. No one can really debate the fact that The Simpsons are a classic show. They knew how to bring everyone to the table. It was a show that pretty much anyone could watch and enjoy. From kids to teens and more adult people, The Simpsons was always a great show to have on which is why a lot of us remember the times when one of our family members or even our mom or dad used to tune in to watch it during dinner or on a Saturday night, back when the first seasons were being aired throughout the early 2000s. It really is one of those shows that you remember watching in the living room of your home. 
cozy and without any worries in mind. Unless you were me and you remember finding these weird and obscure Simpson videos online. Toys R Us was a big, if not the biggest and most well-known toy store in the world. Being present in the US and also internationally, Toys R Us was the main stop for kids of all ages to find their favorite toys and have a fun time discovering and browsing the many aisles filled with the best of the best. Going inside the store was a feeling like none other. Pretty much toy paradise for those of us who experienced it at an early age. Unfortunately, in 2017, after being open for almost 70 years, Toys R Us announced that they would have to file for bankruptcy and that they would close all of their stores. Reason being that competition was taking the lead on them and their sales weren't as strong as before, altering Toys R Us completely. Nowadays, the Canadian division of the company has since then been bought by a financial holding company from Toronto and is still operating today in Canada but not as it used to. Long before Pokemon cards had a resurgence, back in the late 90s to early 2000s, the Pokemon card fever was already in place, and it was just like today, but without all the video craziness and the influencers showing off of course. Back in those times, it was more about the collecting itself rather than the idea of the card being highly priced. People got them because they liked to collect them and they would also use them to actually play with others on school playgrounds or game centers. Add also the fact that the Pokemon TV show was being first aired during the time, so that definitely added up to the mania. Pokemon cards make us look back to a time when Pokemon was barely taking off in the West, and how in the end, what we really all wanted was to catch them all. I mean, what really is there to say about Disney films? We will have at least a movie or two that we remember and like. Whether it be one of those classic art style movies or the Pixar animated ones, we've all got memories of watching them when we were young. They're like the very own idea of nostalgia mashed into an animated movie. I for example remember watching The Incredibles on repeat when I was little. But yeah, be it Fantasia or Finding Nemo, we've all got a Disney film that has stuck to us till this day. Cool Math Games is a website that became popular throughout the 2000s. It was a portal that hosted lots of flash games, and unlike the name suggests, most of them were not even related to math at all. Most popular games included Run 2, the Papa series, and Fireboy and Water Girl. The reason why this is on the list is because most of us who went to school after things like computers and laptops became the usual in the classroom, we more often than not would go ahead and use them not to work on them, but instead to play flash games. But as most schools did block all flash game websites, Cool Math Games was one of the only websites that could bypass that, giving it godly status among the students, therefore making it the number one stop for flash games when you were in school. Rage comics were simple drawings that were made to express a simple situation with humor. These got largely popular over time and originated on sites like 4chan and reddit throughout the late 2000s. These usually depicted faces that starred in weird or sometimes quotidian situations and were posted all over the internet, each face representing a type of emotion. You could definitely say that these were the precursors to the face memes that we have nowadays. Faces like the troll face and the rage guy originated from this time. It's somewhat weird to see just how much the internet has evolved. Club Penguin was a massive multiplayer game experience made by Disney that allowed you to customize your own penguin and live in a virtual world. It was a flash online game that got tons of players and was pretty successful during this time. Lots of us remember playing this game and being completely immersed in its mini games and the social component of the game. Back in the day, there was not that many games around that had these social components without having to spend tons of money or be as accessible for younger people. So Club Penguin was a wonder for a lot of us younglings. This would later spark thousands of memes of the game due to it being a huge part of internet culture and a lot of people's childhoods. Unfortunately, on January 31st, 2017, it was announced that Club Penguin would close for good to make way for Club Penguin Island. On the last day of the game's existence, all users received a free one-day membership as a farewell gift and got reunited on the lobby for a last goodbye, putting an end to this fantastic and meme-worthy game. Although, to surprise by some, 
The game was recently revived by fans and is now under the name of Club Penguin Rewritten, proving that if a game is too good, fans will always find a way to bring it back. Who remembers watching Bill Nye the Science Guy when in biology class? It was a go-to for teachers to do that, and in a way it was and still probably is a good tactic. For those who don't know, Bill Nye the Science Guy was a science TV show made by Disney during the 90s that showed Bill Nye explaining lots of scientific concepts and experiments in a fun and easy way to understand. The program was mainly targeted for younger audiences which is why lots of us remember watching it when we were young in our home or even out of school since it was indeed an educational show and teachers would go ahead and show them in class. All in all, it is a fun show that we all have fond memories of for making our science classes a little more entertaining. Mobile games nowadays are thriving. They're at a point that even some could rival big company games. As technology has been rising and getting better every day, mobile games just keep on looking better and better. Back in those early beginnings, when mobile games were just getting attention, we remember those times when we used to have Angry Birds installed in our phones, Where's My Water, or even that one paper toss game that people had on their iPhones. All in all, they were pretty good games, fun, and very fundamental. As with other things that I've mentioned from the iceberg, Minecraft also had a resurgence recently. Although to be honest, I feel Minecraft is one of the only games that has really grown with its players and knew how to adapt to the internet landscape of things. Minecraft is probably one of those games that you still play, yet you have nostalgia for. It could be because of its deep and immersive soundtrack, or the fact that you remember the days that you spent creating that huge village that you and your friends made for your survival world. Or it could even be because you liked watching your favorite Minecraft YouTubers from back in the day. Whatever it is that makes you feel nostalgic, Minecraft is definitely a game that doesn't seem to age, and it doesn't seem like it'll stop anytime soon. Blockbuster was the main stop for movies or games in the 90s to mid 2000s. It was a video rental store that if you remember going to, you can definitely recall a lot from the characteristic blue carpets to the many aisles that went from horror films to PS2 and GameCube games, Blockbuster was a great store, and was the alternative that we had before digital downloads started to become the usual. You could rent stuff here for a reasonably good price and have that specific movie or game in your home to watch or play for about 4 or 5 days. Pretty legit. After that, you would go ahead and return it to them without even having to go inside the store. They would have these little mailbox type of things that you would drop your game or movie on, and it was the best. But yeah, Blockbuster was great and will still be remembered as the one store that gave us tons of entertainment even before things like streaming services became a thing. Even though Grand Theft Auto was an M-rated game, lots of us remember playing the games when we were pretty young. Give it because a brother or cousin had the game, or that simply most of the times our parents just didn't care about the rating. The sandbox mechanics really gave the game its charm along with its massive, satirical parody of the real world. And let's not forget the easter eggs that all of these games had that pretty much just made them even more legendary and nostalgic. Whatever game it is that you played of the GTA franchise, you can for sure recall the times that you went on a rampage, or the times when you would get stuck on a mission for days or even weeks. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! GTA is simply a franchise that you just couldn't get around without playing at least once. One Direction was a boy band that became popular around the 2010s. They were known for making catchy and very juvenile music. After dropping What Makes You Beautiful around 2011, this caused their popularity to rise immensely, quickly giving the band stardom, and of course fans. Their popularity was so much that they even got to star in famous Nickelodeon shows and even Sesame Street. After having entertained millions of people with their music, around 2016, the band decided to have a hiatus and not do anything for a while. But in the end, that didn't come out as it did, and the band split up, each member going in their separate ways. But even though they already split, the most dedicated fans of this band still hold on to those memories and songs that make them feel nostalgic of younger times, hoping that even in the slightest, the band could be brought together once again.
The Nintendo DS was a portable game device of the 7th generation. It was the first of its kind to include a touchscreen and have it be a major selling point, long before even cell phones had them. Along with the Wii, the Nintendo DS was a very successful console, being the second most sold video game console in the world. After knowing those numbers, it wouldn't be surprising to know that some of us had it when we were young, and oh boy with titles like New Super Mario Bros, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, Pokemon Heart and Gold, and major retro compatibility with Game Boy Advance games, who wouldn't want to have one? They were the number one portable console at the time, and along with its home console counterpart, it also shared that minimalistic and beautiful menu that was simply mysterious and oddly calming. Just a great handheld console overall. The Magic School Bus was another educational TV show that was targeted for younger audiences. It was a show that mainly talked about scientific topics in a fun way as we had mentioned previously with Bill Nye. Both of these shows share the common fact that they were both used in schools by science teachers to spice up the class and make it a little more interesting. The Magic School Bus though was remembered because not only did it teach scientific topics, but it was also a cartoon that had a story in each episode and short weird and funny situations with characters that people knew and were accustomed to. All in all, a good show for class. BrainPop.com is an educational website that contains over 1,000 educational videos for people to watch. The videos are very well known because of the characters that appear on it, Tim and Moby the Robot. For years, these videos have been shown all over schools and have been very popular among students. I, for example, remember watching these videos because our teacher would use them as pop quizzes or for tests. Along with the rest of the educational shows that we've mentioned, BrainPop was another educational show that teachers had under the rug for when they just wanted to have a fun time in class. Miniclip is the browser game website that hosts the most browser games in the world. The website was founded on 2001 and it became quite popular with internet users during the late 2000s. Flash games were on the rise during that time and thus, Miniclip served as a platform to go on and find those games to play. Miniclip was one of the main platforms that was used during that time, along with some other ones that we've mentioned and will be mentioned soon. But overall, if you ever used the internet when you were a kid, you can for sure remember going into this website to play some good old Flash games. To be honest, I actually didn't know what the iceberg meant with silly bands. But after researching a bit, I quickly remember what they were. Silly bands used to be quite popular among kids in the late 2000s. They were rubber bands that had shapes of things ranging from animals to tools or really anything. You could wear them as bracelets or even trade them amongst your friends. The more you had, the better you were. But yeah, to put it simply, they were the fidget spinners of the late 2000s. Nowadays they are nothing more than a memory. Pillow pets are stuffed toys that can become pillows in just seconds. This was possible due to the implementation of velcro straps that could easily separate out to have it turn into one. These got really popular around the 2010s, and lots of kids had them, mainly due to the cuddly and cute nature that these gave out. Nowadays they are still being sold, but not as before, and now most of us that had them have now grown up and we only carry the memories of having one. I mean, what else can I say? The concept is good, and everything about the product is appealing for children. They really nailed it. YouTube poop is a genre of videos that became popular ever since YouTube became a thing. The videos themselves consist of taking existing clips and splicing or altering them to be weird and funny. Most of the humor that is used in these videos is rather shocking and hysterical, which is what makes it unique. Another trait that makes these videos unique is that they all use certain techniques or have certain popular memes or cultural references in the videos. As times have passed, YouTube poop has changed in slight ways but has been holding on strong and there are still tons of people who dedicate their time to create some great YTPs and a huge crowd that demands these types of videos. If you've been on YouTube for long enough, 
you've definitely seen your fair share of them. Goosebumps is a series of horror fictional novels created by Arlstein. Each book follows a singular horror story that would most always have a memorable monster or antagonist. These books were targeted for younger audiences and were very popular because of their huge abundance in school libraries and the fact that kids enjoyed reading the books. For some, it was their first experience with the horror genre, and for others it was the morbidness of the books that made them feel interested. The books became so popular that they even got to have a TV adaptation and Goosebumps got its own show. Both the novels and the TV show are considered nostalgia worthy by fans, and Goosebumps has continued to be active since then, with movies and newer series being made. The Angry Video Game Nerd is a web series made by James Rolfe that follows the adventures of a very short-tempered and foul-mouthed nerd that rants about really bad games and reviews them. The series first started in 2006, and they quickly grew popularity when they were uploaded to YouTube during that year. As time passed, the angry video game nerd became more well known and began to produce even more episodes. The quality got better and the direction that the show was taking was really positive. All of this positivity cemented the show as one of the best YouTube series at the time, having hundreds of thousands of views. The show's reception was so good that the web series ended up getting a movie sometime later around 2014. And up until our times, the nerd is still out here making reviews for us to enjoy. For those of us who grew up with YouTube at the time, these series are nothing more than legendary. Newgrounds is an online entertainment website that hosts user-generated content that can range from games to animation to artwork and much more. The website was created by Tom Fulp in 1995, but it wasn't until the 2000s that Newgrounds started to get attention. Long before the days of this game being out, Newgrounds used to be one of the biggest and most visited websites for Flash animations or games. Newgrounds had a huge community, lots of animators and even games originated from here. And it also had its own culture from back in the day that amassed tons of inside jokes or simply shared ideas that users would create. One thing that really makes Newgrounds special though, is the fact that the platform is not at all restrictive with what you can upload, meaning that you could really find some crude and mostly vulgar content in the website, which in a way is what gave it its charm. Racer scooters were the absolute craze back in the day. These got really popular during the 2000s and had a lot of hype surrounding them. It was a new form of transportation that hadn't been done before, and people Especially kids became interested with it due to how easy, cool, and fun it was to use one. Not only did it serve to go from point A to point B, but it was also used to do tricks as like with a skateboard or bicycle. So to put it simply, they were pretty much the hoverboards of the 2000s. Webkins are toy stuffed animals that came with a code when you purchased them. This code was then used in the Webkin's official website, and you could unlock that specific stuffed animal as a character that you could play as or take care of in an online game, similar to that of Club Penguin. These toys were made popular around 2005, and became quite successful due to their unique gimmick of translating a stuffed animal into a digital world. The internet was barely taking off during this time, and so, having something of this caliber, like a toy that can be used in an online game, was a concept that attracted a lot of us, and like I usually say, Kids were the most attracted to this, but yes, you could pretty much play with your stuffed animal in a digital game and have them go to the arcade, have their own custom home, or even get them clothes. I mean, who wouldn't find that to be cool? Bionicles was a line of Legos that centered around an original story that was told through different mediums. Bionicles were unique in that, in comparison to Lego, the pieces used to make stuff were a lot more different than the ones used on Legos. Plus, Bionicles focused on the characters themselves, so most sets were about constructing or building a certain character, rather than a scene or vehicle. This line of Legos was pretty successful during its time. This spawned many movies, and even a video game for the 6th generation of consoles. Nowadays, these toys have been discontinued, but the memories and the many hardcore fans still keep on giving.
Windows XP is a version of Windows that succeeded the Windows 2000 and Windows Me operating systems. It was originally released in 2001, and from there to here, Windows XP has become one of the most used operating systems of all time, selling well over a billion copies by the end of 2014. Many reasons pointed that it was because of poor reception of the later versions of Windows, and also due to how easy it was to have the system running in place. Plus, people just liked the aesthetic. Something about the vibrant blue colors and the big and loud startup sounds really just capture us. In the end, I'm pretty sure that most of you will remember the interface, that legendary background, and playing 3D ball on that old piece of work. It's just a great operating system. Adam Sandler movies are sorta of weird. We all remember watching these movies for some reason, but mainly I think it is because most of the movies were oriented to be family friendly, or at least PG. Comedy is a huge point of most of the movies, so they are in a way the perfect movies for a Saturday afternoon in the couch with your family. They're easily digestible and okay. Most of them are sharing some similarities here and there, like how in most of the movies he's married, pursuing, or dating a hot woman, or how in almost all the movies the same group of actors get recycled and used for the same roles. There are pretty much movies with very lazy plots, but they're remembered for that very own reason. Sometimes all you want is to put on a movie and be able to just chill along with it. Neopets was a virtual pet website that was sort of similar to Webkin's. The changes being that Neopets was more fantasy related, a lot more robust, and also way more popular. In it, you could customize virtual pets and buy them virtual items with in-game currency or actual in real life money. There was things like trading and actual communities present in the online game which made it a lot more interesting. The game was extremely popular around the 2000s and it became a staple to come through the years. The game was responsible for giving lots of kids their first online experience and also for being the game to inspire kids to go beyond the open world of the game and expand upon it online in forums or through blogs. It sparked that desire to do fan content. Nowadays the game is still active and you can still play the game, but it doesn't have that many players as it used to of course. Twenty twelve was a memorable year for a lot of us. Not only did it mark the date that Grumpy Cat was born, it also marked the day which everyone believed that the world was going to end. And by end, I mean like turn into the apocalypse. People around the time believed this because of the end date of the Mayan calendar that displayed the twenty first of December of twenty twelve as the final day. Even though it might sound completely absurd, being a kid at the time and hearing adults talking about a possible cataclysmic event like this was indeed puzzling and rather confusing. It really did leave you questioning whether it was true or not. Throughout all the year, people had this idea stuck to their minds, and when the day came, we all confirmed that all of those theories were nothing but bogus. Plus, something like this had already happened before during the year 2000, and from that experience, a lot of people already knew that it was just going to be overblown. The 2012 end of the world was a weird time. With the internet being present and information being as fast to get like a button press, it was no surprise that this end date was the one to be the most viral among the other end dates that had passed. Oh, and this event also sparked its own movie, but that's out of the good picture. <laughs> Blue Bunny ice creams are ice creams that are typically sold in ice cream trucks. They are remembered because a lot of us bought these ice creams from these trucks when we were kids. They were the most popular and also the ones that tasted the best. But one of the main things that really made these ice creams special was that Blue Bunny had a selection of ice creams that were made to look like popular cartoon characters. Like Spongebob, Bugs Bunny, or even Sonic the Hedgehog, who is of course a video game character. This prompted a lot of us to be attracted to these ice creams and have them in our minds as a collective memory. They were tasty and just iconic. I mean, who doesn't remember getting a badly shaped Sonic the Hedgehog ice cream? They were the best. Hot Topic is a store that specializes in clothing, accessories, and geek stuff. This store is usually remembered for being one of those stores that have tons of items that are particularly attracting to those people who look for more alternative and edgy things. Hot Topic was first founded on 1988 
and since then it has been supplying the best in pop culture to all of us nerds out there. If you were an edgy teenager from back in the day, then this was the main store for you. No matter if you're a regular dude or the edgiest guy in the block, there's definitely something for everyone here. Animal Jam is an online multiplayer game developed by Wildworks that was all about having your own animal avatar and being able to customize it to your liking. As mentioned with earlier games, this game also had social interactions with other players and had things like lobbies and even options to have and decorate your own den, making it quite attracting to certain players. This game was targeted for very young audiences, which is why a lot of us remember it because we either played it or we remember seeing ads about it online. This game was another Adobe Flash MMO that really took off. Animal MMOs sure were the thing back in the day. AOL was an American web portal and online service provider. AOL was the earliest form of the internet back in the mid 90s and one of the most recognized brands at the time. AOL was highly popular, given that it provided users with the first web portal and email messaging system which meant that now users could finally have a taste of what the internet was going to become and be like. I honestly wasn't around when this was at its prime, but I can definitely tell you that AOL was crucial to form the internet of today. Lucas Cruikshank, or more well known as Fred, was a content creator that became popular during the early years of YouTube due to his videos. His videos consisted of him doing weird and funny skits that showed him in many situations while he talks to the camera with high-pitched screeches and uncontrollable emotion. His videos were very popular during that time and garnered millions of views. If you were on YouTube during its early beginnings, then you're for sure to encounter this guy. His videos became so viral that he even got sponsorships, deals with big TV channel companies like Nickelodeon, and he even got his own movies. Either you hate him or like him, Fred was one of the first people to really show everyone that YouTube was a platform for all kinds of people. And that, no matter what type of content you make, as long as it's entertaining and fun, you can be successful in the platform. The dress was a picture that became viral on social media in the year 2015. This picture showed a dress that depending on who's watching it, the individual would see either a blue or gold dress. This caused a huge debate over which one was the true color. Everyone was sharing the picture, and it even got featured in the TV shows and news outlets. Point is, the picture had this effect because of the way each person perceived color, and also because of the device the person was seeing the picture in. It all really had to do with the perspective in each individual's chromatic adaptation. But yeah, the dress was all around social media and it sparked other similar images to be shared all around the internet. A classic of modern culture. Battle for Dream Island is a YouTube series that focused on inanimate objects or plants that lived in a fictional world. These characters had to compete in a competition quite similar to that cartoon show by the name of Total Drama Island that was popular in Cartoon Network. To be honest, I don't recall seeing this YouTube series, but it is indeed part of a lot of people's memories. Be it the style or the plot, the series were indeed successful during their time, and even nowadays the main channel still keeps on uploading stuff. The Super Stussy S refers to the now very well known S sign that we all used to draw in primary school or that we saw our friends draw. This symbol was everywhere in schools all over the world, and nobody really had the idea of how it originated at the time. Theories say that it all started in the 1890s when a professor created the S for one of his practical graphics books, and some others state that the S could have derived from the symbols of an ancient Dacian solar cult. But whatever the origin is, we all remember doing or seeing this symbol all over school seats and books. The Super Stussy S also goes by other names such as the Super S, the Superman S, or Pointy S, but Super Stussy S is the most accurate one. Hey guys, if you've reached this point in the video, then I just want to say thank you. It really means a lot to me to know that you've reached this point. I worked hard on this video and it took me a while, but it's here. <laughs> but anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and That'll let me know if you guys want me to keep on doing these videos. But yeah, 
Uh, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, see ya.